So I'm going to show you how to use voltage to make pieces of plastic fly. We're using the voltage or the electric field that's produced when you put a lot of charges on the surface. And to do for, our, for the objects we're going to make fly, we're just using the simple plastic vegetable bags. These are polyethylene, I believe, and different types. You can try different types. And the simplest way to do this is to just stretch out the bag and snip it with a pair of scissors. I forgot to bring my scissors. And if we do that, you make a nice ring. And this is the easiest shape to fly. We'll talk about some other shapes in a minute. This is the easiest. Now what we need to do is we need to put some charges, some electric charges on this. And what we're going to use is called contact electrification. Basically, we're going to put two different materials together, and when that happens, since they're, the, the materials are different, they're made out of different atoms and different molecules, and those different atoms hold on to their electrons. Some of them hold on to their electrons stronger than others. So when we bring them very close together, the different materials are sort of playing tug-of-war with each other's electrons. The, uh, the atoms in the plastic are pulling on the electrons that belong to the atoms in the tabletop. And the atoms in the tabletop are pulling on the electrons that belong to the atoms in the plastic. And so if we bring them really close together, they're pulling on each other. And then when we pull them apart, just like in any tug of war game, one of them wins. One of those materials is going to steal some of the electrons from the other. And we'll say that has a negative charge. That, of course, means that the other surface, which lost electrons, has a positive charge. So they have opposite charges, and opposite charges, you might remember, attract each other, which is why this plastic wants to cling to the table. So what we need to do is we need to find the right combination of two surfaces so that one will steal electrons from the other. And you just have to do that by trial and error. It's hard to tell which ones will steal, and it's even harder to tell which is going to be positive and which is going to be negative. But we don't really care about that. All we care about is that they're opposite. And for, in my experience, this tabletops and kitchen countertops work really well. You might also try, this is just a painted shelf board. That works well. You can also try glass. Try different combinations of things. But as you can see, this is working very well. Now, the reason I'm rubbing it, some people think that it's friction that produces these charges. It's not friction. It's just that by rubbing it across the surface, I'm bringing more of those atoms of each material close together. Because it's, if you can look at them with a microscope, it's a very rough surface. So we want to bring them as close together as possible. And kind of rubbing it back and forth on the surface does that. And as you can see, this is really clinging. So if you get this static cling, you sometimes call it, that's a good sign that we're charging up our plastic. So now what we need to do is we need to put the same charge on another material. Opposite charges attract each other, but similar charges repel each other. And to do that, what I found works the best is just a piece of PVC pipe that you can get from a hardware store or, or a home improvement store. It's very cheap, so if you don't have one of these yet, you're going to see in a minute a really good reason to get one. A piece like this, this is probably about 50 cents. I don't think this fit not even 50 cents worth of pipe. So it's very cheap, very easy to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same contact electrification. This time I'm not going to rub it on the tabletop. That doesn't work very well. But what I find works really well is a cotton shirt, like my Cool Science t-shirt. So I'm going to rub it back and forth. And you probably can't hear it on the microphone, but I can really hear all of those charges. It sounds very staticky. And that tells me I'm charging up the rod. And hopefully, if the rod has the same charge as the plastic, when I toss the plastic up in the air, if I can get it off my hand, you can see that I can make it fly. So we have the same charge. I don't know if it's positive or negative. We can have, but we have the same charge on each object. Gravity's trying to pull that hoop down, but the electric field from my rod is producing an electromagnetic force that's pushing back up. Sometimes we call that an electrostatic force. Some people don't like that. Some people just like to call it voltage or voltage force. But whatever it is, it's a force that's just stronger, a little bit stronger than gravity, 
so that I can use it to fly my hoop. I can even do some cool tricks and do loopy loops. Now, if you don't have a PVC rod like this, there are other materials that work well, and this is where you can do a lot of experimenting. One thing that I find works really well is a balloon. Chances are you might have a balloon. So again, we're going to charge up our plastic hoop, and I'm going to charge the balloon the same way I charge the PVC rod, by rubbing it on my cotton shirt, and we'll try this again. And you can see the balloon works really nicely too. You can also try a plastic soda bottle. A lot of things work. All right, so that's what's going on there. You also notice, by the way, quite again, it really likes to stick to me, and that's because I'm a very good conductor. We'll talk about that another time. Let's get my balloon out of the way for a minute. Now, it's getting really close to Christmas right now, so a fun way to do this experiment is by making a snowflake fly. Now, I'm not going to show you here how to make this snowflake, but there are lots of places on the internet and in our write-up on our web page, our activity page, I give you some links to some places if you've forgotten how to, how to cut these nice symmetrical snowflakes. Usually you cut them out of paper. I cut this out of the plastic from my grocery bag. And so I'm going to charge it up the same way. I'm just going to bring it into very close contact with my tabletop, which is working so well. And I'm going to charge up my PVC rod on my cotton shirt. Oh, I can really hear that crack one. Told me lots of charges. It's a very dry day. Of course, we're in Colorado, so the humidity is usually very low. And let's see if we can make a snowflake fly. Ooh. Now, sometimes weird shapes like this are really hard to control. So it might take some practice to control it. Whoa. And you can cut this into all kinds of shapes. If you don't have the patience to make a nice, beautiful snowflake like this, you can just rip off any old piece. Or you can cut it in the shape of a butterfly or a bird, and then it'll look like you're flying a butterfly. Whoa. Let's get a little bigger piece. You can take your scissors and, and like say, trim it into a shape of a bat or a butterfly or whatever you like. Now these weird shapes are really hard to control, but you can see that we can make them fly. Kind of looks like a fish. Anyway, hope you have fun with this one. This is a really cool experiment.